Today we're going to speak of habits and habits that you know you need to do to produce whatever result that you would like to produce. One of the things that I was fascinated with for a long time was this process of developing a habit. I realized that so much of what we do, so much of what I did and continue to do is habitual. And one of the movies that I watched, which is actually a documentary a while back, is called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. And it's the story of a Michelin chef who pretty much does the same routine every day until when he shows up to his restaurant and he's actually presenting and preparing the food for his clients. He allows himself to creatively express. So pretty much the rest of his life is one big routine and a process. And that fascinated me, and this was a while back, because I realized that there was a lot to be learned about that. There's so many things that we know we have to do. If we could only do those things and those things are complete, then when we create the space to be able to express, whether it's an entrepreneurship, our career, creative expression, we won't have these thoughts in our mind of incompletion. That's what we aim to do. And when I was inspired by that movie, I started to put that into action to a higher degree. I felt I was doing it with a concept that I learned called morning routine, which is essentially sequencing the morning part of your day and doing certain behaviors and activities until they form habits, knowing that they were playing a contributing role to all areas of your life, as well as my performance when I would do my work, such as included in my morning routine, meditation, affirmation, exercise, eating a healthy breakfast. These are things that when I do them, what I notice is that I have more flow. I have a deeper degree of calm. I have ever compounding self-esteem and self-confidence because I have seen myself do things that I commit to, which brings me to a quote here from a very powerful book called Relentless by Tim Grover. He was a former coach for Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, and he had the ability to coach them in a way that allowed them to express their talents in a way that brought out that performance, that high-level performance. So there was a lot of insight in that book. When I read that book, I reflected upon something else that I learned. So we have the power and the ability to sift through large volumes of information at any given time because of this reticular activating system. And it's a mass of nerve cells and fibers situated primarily in the brainstem that filters out unrelated information so that related information can be received or revealed. So. When we have a vision or goal, it's important to identify the habits and the skills and the behaviors, and we know what they are, that are related to that vision and commit. This is also how we reprogram the subconscious mind. Because if you are committed to something and you are engaged in that activity, after it becoming a habit, it then moves into a way of life. And then it becomes natural. And many of these habits have benefits as far as physical benefits, emotional benefits, mental benefits, spiritual benefits, such as exercise. And these benefits also translate into other important areas of our life, such as the ability to deal with stress if it shows up the ability to stay consistent, stay focused. There's a lot of side benefits from integrating what was discussed in The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg as the keystone habit. And I'm going to read a quote here. It says, Studies from the past decade examining the impacts of exercise on daily routines. When people start habitually exercising, even as infrequently as once a week, they start changing other unrelated patterns in their lives, often unknowingly. Typically, 
People who exercise start eating better and become more productive at work. But for many people, exercise is a keystone habit that triggers widespread change. So the understanding here, if you read the book Relentless and you look at Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan, a lot of times we see the end result, this product of their performance, how they play. Or you watch Hero Dreams of Sushi and you see how flow-based and how effortless he goes about doing his art, his creative expression, his culinary arts. And you look at that and you say, I would love to have that in relation to what I do, my talent, my expression, in my entrepreneurial journey, in my artistic expression, whatever it is. I would love to have that. The truth is, it's a process. They all went through it, whether they were coached to go through it, mentored to go through it, or they had discovered it some way, somehow. And then intuitively, they remain consistent like he did in the movie, on certain habits that worked for him, goes through the same routine every day in that movie. But when he shows up to express himself through his culinary arts, he's ready to be creative. It is during that time where he is more in that alpha theta we talked about in the last video. Now, it's one thing for me to say to somebody, get into flow, get into alpha, get into theta. But if a person feels that they're overwhelmed by complexity and they have not set up habits and routines and things in their life to take care of things that need to get done, what could end up happening is during the performance or during the time they have to do the creative expression or innovation if you're an entrepreneur, they might be thinking about unrelated things. That's why we use the power of the reticular activating system. By working with the information that we've been discussing, we're working with impressing the vision on the subconscious, which reprograms ourselves to orient in that direction that is in harmony with the vision. And we can easily, or it becomes easier, to sift through the complex information that's presented to us every day and find what is relevant automatically. Now, we can couple that with habits, and we want to start with one habit, a key habit. For a lot of people, it's exercise. But that might not be the case for you. For you, it might be meditation. Or it could be waking up at a certain time. That one habit has the power to change many habits because of how you feel when you do that habit. How you feel after you do that habit. For me, it's exercise. I noticed this. When I first started my business, IT business, in 2009, intuitively I felt that connecting back to exercise, and probably also based on the kind of information I was consuming at the time, the books I was reading, that I needed to get back into running. So I made a commitment to wake up early and run in the morning before I started working on my business. And what I would notice is that those days that I would run, I would perform way better. My thinking was very clear. I had a deep level of presence, speak about the power of now by Eckhart Tolle. I found more flow, and I reflected back in 2017 when I shared that experience in one of the recent videos of when I realized that flow was the key. I committed to discovering what those things are and commit to doing those things. What I found is that I continuously feel that way during my workday because of those things. However, it may be different for you. It may be something else. This is all part of knowing thyself. But that one thing has the power to change many different things in your life and instill the kind of habits, or as he puts it, replace habits. Because what am I doing instead of exercising in the morning? I might be doing something else. But for me, it's not the optimal thing to do. For me, it's optimal to do the exercise in the morning. And my morning routine, which is to wake up, read my affirmations, get ready, go to the gym. Well, prior to that, I have a tall glass of water. Work out, go back home, take a shower, have a nice breakfast, nice healthy breakfast, and then meditate for 20 minutes. And then after that, I have completed all these important things. 
After a while, it became a habit, but it started out with that first integration of exercise. Then all of a sudden, I started to feel good. And all of a sudden, I said, what if I include meditation in the morning? And I started to feel even better. What if I include eating a nice, healthy breakfast, finding a breakfast that would be ideal for me? Might be different for another person, but I found the ideal breakfast for me. So he says, if you focus on changing or cultivating keystone habits, you can cause widespread shifts. And such was my experience. Making your bed, for example, in the morning tends to kick this off for a lot of people. He even stated it. He said, making your bed every morning is correlated with better productivity, a greater sense of well-being, and stronger skills at sticking with a budget. What would seem as unrelated seems to present itself as related because we recognize that how you do one thing is how you do everything. Because of what Tim Grover mentioned, you had decided that I was going to do this habit. I was going to do this routine. You committed to it. You acted on that. And then you succeeded and you saw yourself succeeding. And then you received the internal reward. So you repeated again and again and again. And then you start to notice this cycle and it translates into other areas of your life. And he describes it really well in his process when he calls it cue, routine, and rewards. Let's talk about this. So a habit, as he had discussed in the book, Power of Habit, generally tends to be stimulated based on a cue, such as you see somebody who has this ideal body that you aspire to have, and then you're motivated to go to the gym. So the cue, the visual cue, or some kind of stimulus motivates you to do something. Or you see somebody eating a certain kind of food and you feel that you want to have that same meal, whether it's a meal you consider healthy or unhealthy, whatever label you want to put on it, you have that desire. And what you find is you do that thing and you have that same cue and that same routine that seems to form a habit, but that's because you get a reward out of it usually a dopamine release. Now, what we aim to do during our conversations is make our reward the realization of our vision. So one of the things that I always suggest when it comes to affirmations or conversations is to make the visualization or your environment stimulating so that it brings forth certain behaviors that through the repetition of doing them form the habit in which the reward is that you are happy and joyous, that you are committed on the journey. You enjoy the journey and see it as valuable as the destination. And then eventually when you get to the destination, you get the reward. That is the same to cultivating an athlete, which was discussed in the book. These are individuals that had practiced many thousands of hours on specific skills Maybe they practice hours on free throws. And then they switch over to practicing hours on defense. And then they develop specific muscles, cardiovascular, and they do a lot of different exercises, a lot of different drills, a lot of different practices, ties into their sleep, their nutrition, their relationships, all these areas of life. Because what it does is all these areas contribute over to the performance or how they play. And we want to look at it from that perspective. So we want to start with one habit. So I'd like you to make a commitment that you're going to pick a one habit that you know that if you integrate this habit, it is going to change many things in your life. It is also going to weave a lot of what we've been discussing in the mind stuff together because so much of it as well ties into this reticular activating system. What we put our attention on and what is impressing the subconscious to the point of affirmation in which you believe reality to be that way subconsciously replays itself again and again and again. And so the way we do this with the cue, routine, and reward is we link the reward of, let's use exercise, going to the gym as more valuable and more beneficial than not going to the gym. For example, we always say in personal development, 
we are moving towards pleasure or moving away from pain, or it could be a combination of those things. So for me, what I've tied exercise to is entrepreneurial performance, leadership. I've created associations and these associations might not make sense for another person, but they make sense to me. And my reward is seeing myself at the end, producing the result. And when I see myself at the end, that's the cue. I automatically go into the routine. Now, if we tie this into the morning routine and what we're talking about as far as habit goes, when I read my affirmations in the morning, I see myself doing those things that the affirmations articulate. And then I want to get out of bed and do the morning routine, but through the repetition of doing it, it's automatic. But maybe in the earlier stages, it was something that I needed the stimulation. I needed the cue to see myself in the end. This is where we work with the imagination. This also works with environment. If you wake up and you have a vision board or you wake up imagining something that you desire to see, maybe it's a business goal, maybe it's a fitness goal, maybe it's a relationship goal, whatever it is. And then you know that the next thing you have to do is go to the gym. You can link going to the gym over to that particular goal. Even if it doesn't seem related, remember, we're giving meaning to everything so we can weave the meaning within ourselves. And I found this to be very powerful because this is what created a lot of the automatic habits within myself. Is I kept associating everything over to my vision and my goals. Even if they didn't seem related, I knew I had to do those things. I knew those were the things I wanted to do. I knew those were the habits that I wanted to cultivate. And I knew how I felt after I did those habits and the benefits from doing those habits, such as the health benefits, the physical benefits, emotional benefits, mental benefits, and so forth. So an example would be, let's say you want an ideal relationship. And one of the habits that you want to have is to be more self-disciplined. What you can say is, I realize that, or you can imagine it as well, by doing the things that you know you have to do each day and seeing it all the way to completion, you make a more authentic and congruent partner in a relationship. And thus the relationship is built on that foundation based on that authenticity and congruence that you have within yourself of committing to something, acting upon it, succeeding and repeating, and you'll also increase your self-confidence. What you'll notice is then you'll have less resistance and you'll do the thing. You can do this with the individual activities. And I also link meditation, here's another example, over to entrepreneurial goals because what I found when I meditate is it improves my ability to stay present. And most of what I do is I connect with people in business and I relate with people and we do deals. And there's a lot of things that they bring to the table for discussion that involves their team and also relatability with others. So what I want is I want to show up with presence in that conversation, in that interaction. And I want to listen deeply and I want to understand them deeply. And I see meditation beyond all the other benefits of meditation as something that contributes to that because I'm developing the ability to remain present and focus on my breathing. That's the kind of meditation I do. I focus on my breathing while releasing my thoughts. And I have seen the effects of that in relation to staying present in my interactions with my clients, team members, and so forth. So that's how we want to work with the cue. So the cue stimulates a routine or a habit because we believe we're going to get a reward out of it. If we can link a reward over to a cue, such as the one suggested, then the bridge is the routine and we'll do the thing or the habit. Now, I also want to reflect upon what we discussed earlier in regards to Hero Dreams of Sushi. 
here's a person that has a lot of routine. He follows a very, you could say, strict routine most of the day, except when he's preparing the food. That's his creative artistic expression. Yes, there is a framework to it. But if you watch the movie, you'll see he varies the portions based on how he engages with his clients. He can adjust the proportions. He has a way of doing it. He's learned it all throughout the years. So he's not rigid in mind. There are certain parts of our journey where routine and valuing and staying committed on the routine and the habit and forming the habit can be very beneficial for us. And there are moments where creative free flow and allowing to express are also beneficial for us. And also change. So I like to work with these kinds of concepts like power of habit, atomic habits, or another book that I read a while back called The Slight Edge by Jeff Holson, which was all about making incremental progress each day. And then what I also like to do is work with what we discussed in our last videos, the quantum leap strategy, doing something different every now and then to steer it up. That way you have more of that fluidity of mind. So in the book, Atomic Habits, he speaks of three layers of behavioral change. Number one is identity-based habits. This level is concerned with changing your beliefs, your worldview, your self-image, your judgments about yourself and others. Most of the beliefs, assumptions, and biases you hold are associated with this level. We spoke about this. We constantly discuss it, and he's bringing it up as well. So by changing our beliefs around in relation to our habits, we can change our habits because we are associating different rewards to those habits. That's happening at an identity level. Worldview, what do we value? Do we value the end result of the relationship goal, the business goal, or the fitness goal, or do we value the short-term reward? A person that has a self-image by working with the subconscious work that we've been discussing, forming that self-image, is going to value the end, or as Neville Goddard puts it, dwells in the end. Then we talk about changing your process. This level is concerned with changing your habits and systems, implementing a morning routine, for example. And we're going to talk about how to weave this all together. And then we got number three, changing your outcomes. This level is concerned with changing your results. So self-image, the result or the vision, and the way we get there is through our behaviors, our habits, our routines. So we want to associate our behaviors and habits over to the reward of the vision or parts of the reward in relation to the vision. For example, might not necessarily associate everything to earning a certain amount of income if it's an income-based goal, but you might associate for some of the things a association over to relationship or family knowing that that's also contributing over to the vision and the vision is contributing to everything else. It's all related. We want to see it all as related because that's the identity that happens to be one with the vision. We've been discussing this. When you see yourself at the end, there is a vision of yourself an identity and we want to embody that identity. And we embody the identity by committing to the journey, essentially what Tim Grover said here. Committing, acting, as in doing the things that are related to that vision by working with this information to form the habits so that our reticular activating system is programmed to lightheartedly keep us on the pathway. And then we succeed and our self-confidence increases and we repeat the process again and again. So changing the process is essentially implementing something like a morning routine or structuring your work day a certain way or your end of day a certain way so that you can stay consistent on what is in harmony with the vision. Now, when we change our identity, we'll automatically start to behave in a way that will be ideal. We want to work with this information in a complementary way to see if there's any kind of inconsistencies and use some of this information to help us overcome those inconsistencies. Thus, I recommend working more with the subconscious 
to instill the identity. Because as we've been discussing in our Neville Goddard-based discussions and our subconscious mind-based discussions and our discussions on psychocybernetics, when the identity has changed or the self-image has changed, the behaviors also change. The skills are further cultivated. So we work with it at that level. We can also work with it by changing the processes around, such as integrating a morning routine. Or we can also change our outcome, our vision, our goal. When he's talking about outcome, we look at it from the perspective of vision or goal. And the vision contains the identity. Who you see yourself to be is found when you see yourself at the end with the vision. That's where you're going. And we want to associate our rewards to attributes related to the vision. And he states the process of behavior change always starts with awareness. You need to be aware of your habits before you can change them. So this is where I always refer to cause and effect reflection. Observe the habits to reveal the consistency or lack of consistency in relation to the ideal self-image that is in harmony with the vision. And if we're not consistent, what we do is we recognize that these habits were formed through repetition of those habits, and we can change them. And we change it via new associations. We link that habit that would be ideal over to something else that would be more of a motivating reward. And then we reduce some of the resistance and do that thing. And then what we do when we repeat that again after we see the success of actually seeing it all the way to completion and maintaining consistency is that becomes a habitual pattern. So a habit is a behavior that has been repeated enough times to become automatic. The ultimate purpose of habits is to solve the problems of life with as little energy and effort as possible. And as he states here, and we've been discussing, one of the most satisfying feelings is the feeling of making progress. So enjoy the journey and value the journey and see it as valuable as the destination. And we can value the journey even more by changing our habits. And as mentioned, one habit stimulates the change of other habits. So we want to find that key habit. And he says, the key to finding and fixing the cause of your bad habits is to reframe the associations you have about them, as we've been discussing. He also says, create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible. This is something that we've been sharing as well. We want to place ourselves in environments that automatically stimulate the ideal behaviors. And we also want to ensure that daily we guard the subconscious to observe the kind of information that we're allowing, which can replay itself again and thus cue certain habits that we don't desire to see brought forth. He says people with high self-control tend to spend less time in tempting situations It's easier to avoid temptation than to resist it. And another important attribute is uh, increase the friction associated with bad behaviors. When friction is high, habits are difficult. If I don't have the kind of foods that after eating it, I don't feel good in the house. I don't feel like going and driving to the store or the grocery store to get it. That's more friction. So I'm less likely to do it. And then I automatically eat the other foods which are foods that I want to eat and I feel good eating them. And this is something that I've spoken to many others has been very beneficial for them as well, is to just set up the environment in a way that's ideal, that stimulates you to do what you really want to do and cultivate those into a habit. Because after a while, once it's a habit, even if the information or the food or whatever it is that you don't want to consume is there, your reticular activating system has been programmed to put an attention onto something else that is more in harmony. Then you get more into flow, a deeper flow way of living, which we want to weave into our discussions. But before we do that, I want to talk about a number of friends that I have that actually are prime examples of individuals who are able to maintain ideal fitness, health and fitness from a place of flow. They automatically want to eat the foods that are ideal. They automatically want to go exercise and do all these things. And none of it is force-based. What I have found as I had conversations with them was exactly what's being talked about in this video. 
they have associations with certain lifestyle that is in harmony with the vision and they desire it very deeply. So how do we integrate flow into this discussion? Well, let's look at it like this. As I've been discussing, and I made two videos on this, I recommend watching it, The Magic of Flow and Flow-Based Workday, is to set up your day to be as ideal as possible and continuously improve incremental improvements as well as quantum leap jumps to improve your days. And set it up so that you feel more flow because if you're doing the things that you know you want to do and you get yourself to do those things by working with the subconscious, by forming habits, you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to feel a lot more confident and your days are going to be a lot more smoother. So we start by having a goal, a vision, and we want to break that down into granular goals or granular aspects in relation to the vision. Say your vision is to bring forth entrepreneurial success. Well, there's different areas of the journey. Maybe there's certain skills you want to develop. Maybe there's certain businesses that you want to be part of. Maybe there's people that you want to meet, so thus you want to work on your communication skills. Maybe you also want to dedicate time towards health, fitness, and relationships, or other areas of your life, family, and so forth. There are parts that are related to the goal, and the goal is related to that. And so every day we have reporting and feedback with all the things that we do. And what we're looking for is the flow breakers, habits that we don't want to have. We want to replace them with the good habits. And we want to start with the one habit, the keystone, as discussed, that has the ability to transform us into more of that ideal self-image, change it. And then what we notice is we will do that thing. Our day will change. And in the process of committing to those activities and the consistency of staying committed to those activities, which will become easier, the reticular activating system is further being programmed with what you are engaging in. And then what we'll notice is what happens when a person gets into deeper stages of flow, as we've been discussing from the Kabbalion, the stage of involution. Actions and awareness become one. You're doing all these things that you know you want to do to produce the results. Distractions are excluded out of consciousness. Fear, doubt, and indecision starts to taper away. You experience time distortion as you're so much more in the now, present, enjoying what you do. And you and the behaviors and the activity becomes autotelic. You're going to notice this in certain parts of that documentary, the moments where he becomes autotelic, one with, and we discussed this in the last video, when Neville Goddard speaks in his lectures, or any effective communicator speaks, you will notice the points, and you'll notice this even with yourself, where you become so one with what you're doing. So that's the power of habit right there and the ability that it has to help you maintain that ideal identity that is one with the vision. And I trust that you found this video to be very helpful. Integrate what has been discussed in here. We're probably going to discuss this kind of information even more so as we weave it into the mind stuff because what I like to do is I like to focus on spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical as attributes in relation to the vision. And forming habits... And seeing yourself form habits and being consistent brings forth a higher degree of congruence of the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. If you want a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.